Hi everyone, so today we'll be making this yarn stick weave thing. This is what it looks like. It's like woven, it's like a string going this way and this way. And yeah, I might like at some point like cut off like this extra stick junk because I just don't really want it. But yeah, you can like tie a string on it and like hang it like this or like this or even like this if you wanted. Whatever you want. And this is what it looks like. So yeah. So what you're gonna need is stick. Look well, something like this. Yeah, this is one I found. You don't know what it is. It doesn't need to be this big or be smaller or bigger, depending on what you want to do. This is just one I like. And you need some sort of yarn for like the base main part, like that you'll be doing the prettier part onto. So you'll, I'm gonna be using this black thinner yarn because what I have. And then for the decoration part, you're gonna need to use thicker yarn like this which will make it go faster because you'll need less or you could use a thinner yarn like this and it'll just take more time and you could even use like a couple yarns at the same time if you wanted and it would just make it look different or you could use thinner yarn you could switch back and forth to different colors and stuff and do whatever you want but for me I'm just going to be using one color thicker yarn like this because that's what I want to do you'll also be needing scissors and either a yarn needle or some sort of hook to pull the yarn through the weaving part. Whatever you have, whatever you are more comfortable with. I'm going to be using the needle because I have it and it's easier. But you can use the hook and you can just pull it through. Whatever. Or you can even try to use your fingers if you wanted. I'm just giving you the options. And then if you're using a yarn needle, you'll need some sort of needle threader if you're using thicker yarn. Like for thinner yarn, I can mostly just stuff it right through this. With the sticker yarn, I can't quite get it through, so I need something to stick through, stick the yarn through, and then pull it back through. I just happen to be using a piece of fishing line that's attached to this fish, so, yeah. What you're first going to need to do, take a piece of yarn. I like to start at this end, it's just the way I do it, because then you can wrap it in it better. Because, like, I always have to cut off the yarn from the ball, because the ball, if you wrap it up like this a bunch of higher, you won't be able to get it through. So, yeah. I like to do it on this end, because I have to cut the yarn off till the end. So I'll take this and I'm going to tie it. You can go all as far down as you want, but I'm just going to leave a little gap right there. I'm just going to tie a couple knots right here. Tie them nice and tight so that if you pull, when you pull on it, they don't like untie themselves. Because that wouldn't be fun. I'm going to tie like three of them. Pull them as tight as I can. Sorry I can't show this to you. It's hard to do up in the air. But yeah, so tie it. you just tie it like that. And then you can just... Make sure it's tight. If you want, you could even wrap this end around and you could tie it on the other side a couple times too, but I'm not gonna because I just think this is fine. And then you can just cut this extra stuff off, but don't cut it all off because that just makes it easier for it to unpull itself. You can always cut it off at the end when you feel you don't need it. So then you want to do take it, go straight across. You kind of want to go on like an angly type thing and you want to go around and then you want to go all the way around the stick so you're facing back this way again and then you want to go in here and you want to go around to the other side so it's like this so it looks like that it's a little ziggy zaggy across but it'll still work fine and you want to take this you want to go all the way around to go around the stick like that and then go Make sure that you go up a little bit and you're not just going back across where you were ready to put yarn. Like this. And then you can just go across, but don't go across back to this side. Go across to this side so that it's better to be a little zigzaggy than on each opposite side. Yeah. And you wrap it all the way around like that. Then go all the way around like this. And if you're going like this, you go back this way. Be careful at the end of your sticks are pointing or anything. You don't like poke yourself. I came close to doing that a second ago, but you didn't see. So it looks something like that. And then wrap this all the way around. Like this. And then go in front of this stick. But make sure you go up a little bit too. Because, yeah. And it's a little annoying when you have these little stubby parts of the stick. If mine went above that, and I would rather this part go below it. Because that's just how I want it to be. So, like that. And then you go in front of this stick. Make sure you go up a little bit, because otherwise you'll just go right around the same spot the whole time. 
So it goes up like that. And then you go round, stick all the way around once like that. All the way around and then back over in front of the other stick. And try to keep this fairly tight, but not too, too tight at the same time. So it looks like that. If this isn't perfect, it'll look fine. Once you do the weaving through it, it'll look a little nicer. You go all the way around the stick again. And all the way across in front of the stick. So it will look something like... Like that. And you just keep doing this until you get to the end of the stick. And I'll be right back when that's done. When you have it all wrapped, which should look something like this. You just take your yarn and you cut off some so you have something to tie it off with. But try to keep it tight. And you want to just take this. And you want to try to keep it have a loop right here. You're also keeping this tight. Have this, and I'm going to stick it right through that loop. And pull it tight right there. Because it's going to at least latch it a little bit right there. I can let go then. And then you can just take the knot string. And you can just pull it through that loop thing again. Not the most secure knot, but it's better than nothing. You just keep pulling it through like that. You can do it how many times you want. I'm going to do three, because reasons. And you got it secured. Like that. And you just cut off the extra. To make sure it only just a little bit. Because like, you could always put a dot of glue on it or whatever if you feel like it would be more secure. But I'm fine with this. Just don't pull on it real hard. So it looks like that. So then you're done with your base yarn. And you're going to use whatever your weaving yarn can be. Mine's going to be this pink stuff. I'm going to pull out a nice long piece of it and cut it off because you're going to have to be able to pull it through and tie it on and stuff. So, yeah, we can't have it attached to the ball. So I'm going to pull out a bunch so I don't have to tie it on real often. Just pull out like that much. I like, don't want to pull out too much, obviously, but I think I've pulled out plenty. So I'll cut it off with my ball of yarn. Take my needle, which I'm going to need my needle threader fish string. Stick it through the eye of the needle. Take the end of your yarn, stick it through the fishing line, and then pull the yarn through. And it'll go boom, like that. Because like it fits, it's just I can't get it through with just my fingers. So that's why I need the end of the yarn. And if you pull through enough so it doesn't like undo on it, it'll be annoying. And you can start it whichever side you want. I'm going to start at the bottom and work up. And then I'm going to work back down this way and this way. And then probably it'll do the same. Because this way it gets all the way out to the edge here. And it's fairly straight weaving. And it'll just stop whenever I get to the bottom and stuff and go back and forth. That's how I'm going to do it. So what I'm going to first need to do is find the other end of the yarn. Put my needle aside and find the other end, which found it right here. I'm going to go down here at the bottom, and I'm going to just tie it right here to the stick below this black stuff. I'm still going to tie it, because that's where I want it tied. You could tie it to the yarn, like this, which I think I'm actually going to do. Yeah, you could tie it to the stick or the yarn. I'm going to just tie it right here, the yarn, right over top of the other knot, which of course it's hard to show you on camera because it's hard to hold it up in the air. But I'll show you after I got it done. I'm going to double knot it, and maybe even triple knot it. I think double knots would be good with this yarn because it's really thick, the knot will be really big. And then cut it off and leave just a little bit because reasons. So it's like that, not to catch. Then you find this end. And you obviously can't weave from the first one because you just start weaving from the next one. So go under this one, and then I'll go over this one. And I'll go... And I'm, oh, I'm under this one. So I just need to... You know what weaving is. Over, under, over, under. It's hard to explain it because it's just... I have to focus on this. So I have to go, I'm going to go under this one, over this one. Under this one, over this one. Under this one, over this one. Under, over, under, over. Under. And when you get through a few of them, you can pull it through because, yeah. You don't want to pull it all the way through with every single one because that would just take forever because you're yarn, you long yarn like I do. Like that. I'm just going to go straight up so I get to like the middle. And then I'm going to go to one side and then I'll cut it off and I get done and then I'll go up and I'll go over to the other side. That's just how I'm going to do it because this way it'll get the lines will be. Like I could just go straight up this side and then go in, but then I'd. It'd be like. A fan more, but I want it to be more straight, but just to only go so far when it gets to the places, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to go under the last one. So over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And I'm going to 
when it gets looser like this, it's harder to tell where you're supposed to be. So over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. You gotta pull the needle through and not let it fall back out of itself. Because it's kind of a little looser. But as you do more, it'll get tighter. And you just pull this through. But you got it all the way like that. And then I'm gonna go over, under, over, under, over, and then out. Because I got to the end. Pull it all the way through. I got a little knot in my yarn. Hope that doesn't stay a knot. That'd be annoying. Just pull it out like this. Boom, it was, it was a loop that got looped weird. And keep pulling this through. And then I'm going to just slide this over towards this side a little bit. Because that's just where my knot started. So that's going to go like that and then go over. And then I think I'll go, I'll go up the other side and go over. That's just how I'm going to do this. So then I'm going to come, since I went, if you look at the top, I'm not using that last one. So I'm going to come up and over this one. And then I'm going to weave down this side. So then the one I went over before, I'm going to go under, and then I'll be doing a, the opposite direction that I did before. Then I'll just pull them through because i got to get a few pulled through so it stays. I know where so the yarn stays where I want it. You don't want to pull it too tight because it'll just pull your yarn weird, but if you slide it next to each other, it should start to look something like this. Of course, it'll look much better once you get a whole lot more done, but yeah. And then you, I'm going to go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, pull it through, and pull all the yarn through, and then just pull it, and if your yarn gets a little like uneven like this, like they get spaced weird, you can just rearrange them, so it looks like that, and as you get more, it'll squish together closer, and it'll just do it itself. So you don't have to do it as much. And then I'm going to go over, under, over. This one's weird. Right there, that's out of there. So I'm going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. Like that. And then pull it all the way through. And then readjust my yarns to where they need to be. So they don't like get themselves out of order somehow. Be dumb. So they stay where they need to be. And then over, under, over, under, over, and then I'm gonna just go under the bottom one and out the bottom right here. And then pull this all the way through. kind of just smush them together a little bit not a whole lot because they'll just go together on their own and then that's what it looks like and you just keep doing this over and over and over but I'll be right back because I gotta change the camera battery so I'm back sorry about that the camera was about to die and I didn't want it to just die on me so I figured I'd just change it before it, that happened so yeah, then you just I'm gonna go on this side of the string so I gotta pull it over and make sure it doesn't go on your side of the knot and then I'm gonna just slide this over a little bit so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to go under the one I just went around. And I go back around it like this. I just wrap it around that last string. Like that. And I'm going to go over. Under, which is a little tighter here because there's a little bit like more, there's more yarn because there's less place. Over, under, over. I need to go up here. Under. Pull this through. You don't want to pull it too tight, but you don't want to leave it like super, super loose either. And I kind of just smoosh them toward each other if you can a little bit, but they'll also just, like I said, a million times right probably, they'll just move over when you get more yarn, they'll just get squished together. Also, like this one's all get squished together, but these ones won't be like, squished together because you have to do it on this side too. So I'm going to go over, under, over, under over, under, and then I'm going to just pull it through, and it's basically all you just do, you just keep doing this over and over until you're done, the only thing that's really different is just the beginning and then the end when you just tie it off and stuff, over, under, over, under, over, under, 
over, under, over, under, over, under, over, and then we got to the end. And just pull all the yarn through. And you just kind of smoosh it over towards itself. Make sure your yarns in like rearrange themselves somehow. That would not be fun. So make sure it looks right. And smoosh it over. And then there, that's what it starts to look like. See how it's like, you can kind of see that it's woven here. That's what you want it to look like everywhere. It is harder to see up here because there's just more spaces and stuff. So yeah, this is what it should look like. And then you just go, since I came up and it's like that one right there, I'm going to go up and over this one. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to work on this side. And this side because it's just how I want to do it. If you go back and forth from which side you're on, it's fine. So over this one, then I'm going to go under, over, under, over under over now I'm going to just pull this through just to get it started in the direction and don't like stab yourself with your stick either because that would not be fun if you point the end of the stick you could like sand them off or like chop them smooth or whatever I just I didn't because I didn't I probably will like when I'm done but I just didn't beforehand because I was lazy you kind of want to smush these all towards themselves as much as you can There's a little more of them, and then it's easier than when it's just like two or three. And I start to get a little closer, more weavy like. And then you go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And I'm going to just pull that through. And the shorter piece of yarn would make it so you had to pull less through. But. Then you have to just cut it off and tie on more sooner. So, whatever you are more comfortable with is whatever you do. And we'll go over, under, over, over, under, over, under, over. And I'm not going to get all the way to the bottom this time because, see how it's just like the stick comes over more. So, I was, I'm only going to get to like right here. So, there's going to be two that I don't two black strings that I don't work with this time, which is normal. You'll get less and less as you go if you do it my way, or if you just go all the way over around and then you go back and forth, it'll be different, but this is the way I'm doing it. So as you see, I'm only going to get together these two strings. I'm not going to work them. I'm going through this one, and then I'm going to be done. I'm going to go back the other direction. First, I wanted to slide these a little closer, make it look a little nicer. like that and this is what it's starting to look like and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to try to squeeze into this one right here because it's going to be a little tight I'm going to go try to go under this one but it's going to be really hard so I'm only going to try to go through this one there I got under it the bottom wall will get a little tighter and harder to do as you go which is normal and I'm going to go over and going under is always going to be harder than going over because just is you to get under the yarn. Over, under. And I'm going to start pulling this through before it starts to like make a mess of itself somehow. Like it's trying to right now. Fun times. And it'll look like that. Because see, there's less space for the yarn to go to, so it just looks more smushed here, which is how you want it to kind of look. Now over, under, over, under, over, under. And as you put more yarn in, your black yarns will have, or whatever your cross yarns, will have less chance to move around on you. Because there'll just be more yarn holding it cross this way in place. Over, under, over, under, over under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and then I got to the top, so I'm just going to pull all this through, and then you kind of just slide it over a little, so when you start doing the next row, you're not like on top of it, there's not like a big gap between some of them, and then this is what it's going to look like. 
And then since I went over like that, I'm going to go over like this. And then I'm going to go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And then I'm going to just pull it through. And of course, you could like switch colors or whatever. You could just you just tie it off. You could just I recommend probably tying it off like this side. Then you could maybe like tie it off a little like tighter. I don't know. Or you could tie it off in this end if you want. Just tie it off. Try to make your knot not too big and crazy, but eh. and then you just tie on a new yarn and continue on. But I'm just gonna be using one color. This is just pink. Is kind of my color. In case you can't tell. And then I'm gonna go over. Under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and pull that through. Because I'm getting towards me a little more tricky down here, so I'm going to want to just have this pulled through so it's just done, and then I can work on the next little bit. It's going to be a little more tricky because when you get down towards the bottom here, it just gets a little tighter and stuff. I'm going to go over, under, over, under, over, under, and I think that's how far I'm going to get it. Because I've last time there was two strings I didn't I didn't get to. Now there's gonna be four I didn't get to. I think or, yeah four I think. It's hard to count with the when it's all yarn woven into it. And then I'm gonna just go back up. So you cause you get your strand your back and forth get less like each time once you go a few times. So then I'm gonna just move this yarn back over a little bit so I can see the strings better. And I'm gonna go under this one right here, but it's gonna be really tight. And I'm gonna just go like that. And I'm going to go over, under. The first, like, two unders, after as you start reducing your yarns you go through, will be a little snugger and harder to find and go under, but you can do it. And if you have one of these, like, bendy or plastic needles, that helps. Like, a metal needle, it'd be way harder, because you wouldn't be able to just bend it under where you want. So you see how it starts, like, it's still straight and everything looks normal up here, but see how it, like, it stops here and stuff? Like, okay. Like yeah, like it keeps stops and then it just keeps going down here. This is the look I want, but you could of course just weave all the way up and all the way down and all the way up and all the way down and all the way up. But it would just be hard because you wouldn't be able to get as many rows down here as you would be able to get up here. If that makes any sense. So this is the way it just makes most sense for me. Or if you had a stick that was less wide, it was more like here or something. That'd be a lot easier because it'd be more even all the way across, where mine's a little less. And I'm gonna go over, under. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. When you get to the wider part of the branch, it's a lot easier because there's just more space and stuff. And pull it all the way through. Smush it over a little bit. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, and then out. And pull it all the way through. Got a weird little loopy knot thing in it, so it's harder. It won't go through there. Cause there you go. And you just slide it over a little bit, and then like so it's like that. So I gotta pull it over this way, like this, and go over, under, over, under, over, under, and then I'll just pull it through. Don't pull it too tight again, because otherwise it'll just pull these in, and it'll, and it'll be less straight across and stuff. So you want to kind of just leave it a little loose. Now go over, under, over, under, over, under. Pull this through. Like that, and pull, push it down a little bit. Over, under, over, under, over, under. Pull all the way through. I think I can get one more over and under right here before I'm done here. So now there's like five or whatever strings that I didn't get to. But it's fine. That's just how it works. And you do it this way. And then push it down. So yeah. I only got this far this time. 
Now I'm going to weave in here and go under this one. It's going to be real tight to get under. Under, over, under. Those first two unders are the tight ones. They're harder to get. And then you just pull through and then you can go on your merry way all the way up. And it'll be a lot easier. Over, under, over, under. Which you can't tell what over and under is. It's just over like this. You just weave back and forth. Mostly just doing the opposite of whatever the last row was. Because otherwise you'll just be yarn in there and it'll look weird. It also is not as like, sturdy and nice. Whatever. Words. English speak. I don't know. And over. Under. So basically means for the last row went over a piece of yarn. You need to go under that one. Under. Over. Under. And if the row went over the last yarn, you need to go. Or under that one, you need to go over it. Just do the opposite. And go all the way up until I get to the top. And then you just switch this over. And make sure your yarn don't like uneven themselves out or whatever. Like that. And then just like this again. We go over this way. And I go on over. Under, over, under, over, under. And then over, under, over, under. So a little, as the yarn goes, it gets a little, as you go, it gets a little harder because the yarn just gets tighter because there's more stuff woven into it. Over, under. And then I'm going to just pull it all the way through. Over, under, over, under, over. And I'm going to get one more under right here, and then I'm going to go back the other way. So I only made it this far this time. Which again is fine. This is normal. And then I'm going to go back up the other way. First under is going to be difficult. Second under, a little less difficult. Make sure not to pull it too tight or it'll like get a big gap right here. Because we want it to kind of look like it's just kind of gradually going here, not like a big gap in one place. So over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, out, and then just pull it all the way through. And then kind of just smush it down. And then, it's like this again, so we go over this way. Over, under, over, under, over, under. It gets harder as you go over, under, over, under. Guys, get the needle to go. Which again, I'll bend your plastic needle like this where it just bends a little. It will be way easier for this on you than trying to use a... Um, metal needle because it won't bend up for you. So if you have a plastic needle, I recommend that one over the metal one. And you hope it don't pull it too tight because you don't want this to get too... Obviously it's going to get a little bit of like a curve to it, but you don't want it too much because... reasons. Over, under. Which, when it gets tighter, you may have to just weave... You may not be able to get it to weave... You need to weave. You may have to stick it over and then stick it back through under. Over under, which is just fine too, it's just another way to do it, and it works for when you get to the more towards the end where you can't quick get your needle to weave through, you need to just stick it right through, so it went over, and then under, and I think this is our, yeah, this is our last, under, and we'll go back, and you guys 
just stick this yarn down so you can get into this little spot right here. And I'm going to go under because I can't weave it. So I have to stick it through. Over. Under. And I'm going to just, once I get that through, which it fell back out, I'm going to just pull this back through. All there. And then this is where it starts to more look like them. Like you actually like, whoa, as you do lots of this, it actually starts to look really cool. Like in the beginning, it kind of looked a little like blah. But then towards the more, the more you do it, the better it starts to look. So you go over. Under. Over. Under. Over. Under. Over. Under. A little bit. Over. Under. Over. Out. And then you just pull all it there. And then you kind of just stick it down a little bit. You can use your fingers or your needle. I gotta smoosh this over a little bit so I can make sure to get enough in here that I can figure out, fill out the rest of this. I gotta smoosh this all over just a little. I'm gonna space it out because see I got real close right here and a little bit farther over here. Which is another place where you're this is one place where your hook could be a little helpful. You can kind of just drag it across and it'll help space them out a little more. And just your fingers would. Try to keep them fairly, just still fairly centered so you can still do the other side pretty good. So you need to make sure you have space up here. So only goal is make sure that you have equal space up here to still have the widest spot down here. Which is what we're trying to get accomplished by moving some of the rows around. Also just to make them look more even and stuff. Just until you like them and stuff, which is for me like there. And I'm gonna just like that, we go over this way. Over under, which I can't weave so I have to stick it through. Over under, over, under, over, under, over, I'm going to pull it through, all the way, because why not, don't pull it too tight, and I'm going to go under, over, under, over, under, over, and I'm going to get to the last place where I went under last time, which is where I'm going to end this time too. like this and then I'm going to go back up first under right here is going to be difficult and I just go straight through and then straight back through you can't just weave it straight through like I never tried before over under over under over under, over, under, and pull it through. Like that. I'm trying to pull it too tight or you'll get like a little gap right there to kind of loosen it a little bit so that it fills in. And then over, or drop the needle. Over, or drop the needle again. Over. Under, over, under, over, and pull it through. And then just stick it down like this. And pull it back. And stick it down again. Like that. 
we still have that much more to do. And then we have the whole other side to do. So then I'm going to go do like this again. Over this way. And then over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, and I'm going to pull it through. If you don't like, when you pull it like this, you don't go like this and then you just jab yourself with your stick. That would hurt. Make sure not to pull it too tight. And then under, over, under, over, and then this will be my last under, and then I'll go back. And so I'm going to go under this one right here. Wait, I missed one. I almost missed a string. Oh no. I noticed because my strings were going to go in the same direction, then my weaving wouldn't look like weaving. And I'll go over this one, under, over, under, over, under, and I'll pull it through. Just like that. Over, under, over, under, over, out. And just pull it all the way through. And then just stick it back down again like this. And pull it, and then it'll pop back up again, and then you stick it back down again. Like that, yeah. I think we can go back down once and then come back up and it'll be good for how close I am right now. But your stick might be different. You might have to go more times than me. You might have to go less. Not all sticks are made equal. We have to go under like this. We go around like this. And I'll go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Now I'm going to just pull it through. Over. Under. Over. And pull that through. And if it gets caught around the end of your stick, just loosen up your yarn, take it back off, and then continue pulling it. And then I'm going to go under this next one, and then I'm going to go back. And again, you can't follow where I stop and start and move back and forth exactly because your stick will be differently shaped and differently sized than mine. It's pretty much a guarantee. And then I'm going to just go back under this one. So then I'll go under this next one right here. I'll be happily even going over this one now. So under, over, under, over. Under, over, ow. What I've been telling you, don't poke yourself with the stick. I just did in the hands. It hurt. And then pull this all through. And then, under, over, under, over, out. And then pull it all through. And then I can't really fit a whole lot more in there. Instead of just trying to do more, I'm just going to spread this out a little bit towards it. I've been only squishing it mainly over just so that I had room to put more in as I was working. Focus. Focus. Yes, there. And I kind of can just smush part of this over so that it looks like perfect there. And then the next thing you do is you just tie your string off right here. And then you just take your yarn and cut off most of it leave like eh then you could use your hook and you could like pull it back over itself and then like pull it in or something but I'm just going to take it and tie it right here to the stick 
Or actually, I could, you could just tie it right here to the stick, but I'm going to push this back a little bit. Take this hook of mine and pull this back under through this one last loop like it was going back down again. And pull it through there, but not all the way. Like that. And I'm going to just take this, stick the end through the loop. Hold this like this. Pull on that. And then cut this off. And call that good. Not the most secure knot, but yeah, works for me. And then, yeah, so I'm going to use this as the front because that's just where I tied the knot off. But yeah, and then that's what that looks like. So I just showed you how to do all the one sides, and now you can just basically rewind the video. Watch it all over again, just be weaving the other direction on your stick. So I'm going to do the rest off camera so you don't have to sit through the whole thing again. So I'll be right back. So I'm back, and I got this all done. Just like this. So yeah, now what you can do is you can tie it all off and everything. You can just like cut off any extra stick you don't want. Like, you just break it off, or you can try to cut it off with your scissors or whatever. But yeah, I'll do that later because my scissors, I don't break my nice scissors. And I can buy a cut off some of the sticks that got a little too much. I just didn't want to have not enough. So yeah. And you can just like take like string and just like tie it here and then just like hang it on the wall or whatever. I've decided that this is going to be the back of mine and be the front. Because it's just, yeah. I'll I'm going to cut off more of the stick. It's just I don't want I don't want to break it right now and break it wrong. So I'll do it later. But yeah, this is it. So, you can do whatever you want with it. You can hang it on the wall. Yeah. If you like crafts with weird, like, things, like, sticks in them, give this a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any ideas, and I'll try them. And subscribe. Bye!